grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Like many other, excuse me, like many other Gen Xers, I grew up watching Sesame Street. I think many of you grew up watching Sesame Street. I learned to count with the count. I loved Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch and Mr. Snuffleupagus. And among my many memories from Sesame Street, there's a song called These Three Things. Do you remember that song? These three things belong together. Three of these things are kind of the same. One of these things just doesn't belong here. Now it's time to play our game. Time to play our game. Okay, some of you are looking at me like I'm crazy. But some of you remember that song, don't you? They would always put up four pictures. Three of them which had something to do with each other. They were all from the same category. A baseball, a football, a basketball. But then one picture had nothing to do with the other ones. A frog. It was not like the others. It didn't match. Well, look around church today. A lot of these things belong together. A lot of these things are kind of the same. We, we just decorated yesterday for, for Christmas. Our children right now are preparing for the Christ, children's Christmas program. Tonight we have our annual Christmas dinner here at church. A lot of these things are like the others. But then our gospel for today was different. Did you notice that? It was the story of, of Palm Sunday. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem for the last time on the Sunday before he died. Palm Sunday, the, the first day of Holy Week. Palm Sunday that we celebrate on the Sunday before Easter every year. In the spring. It's a part of the, the season of Lent. But in the last few years, the powers that be that, that design our lectionary, you know, all the readings we hear in church, they decided to put Palm Sunday, the story of Palm Sunday, smack dab in the middle of our preparations for Christmas. Some of these things belong here. Some of these things are kind of the same. But Palm Sunday doesn't seem to belong here. Or does it? It was a, a sunny spring afternoon um, in Palestine. It was the first day of the, the festival of the Passover. 33-year-old Jesus, together with his disciples and hundreds of other pilgrims, had walked from the, the city of Jericho in the east to 17 miles to the city of Jerusalem. And now they've come to the village of Bethany at the foot of the Mount of Olives. On the other side of the Mount of Olives, is Jerusalem. Now Bethany was a little village Jesus knew well. His friends Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus lived in Bethany. And every time Jesus went to Jerusalem to visit, he would go in during the day but stay the night on the other side of the mountain in Bethany. So now Jesus and his disciples get to Bethany and he tells his disciples, two of them, to go up ahead of them up that slope to an even smaller village called Bethphage, which wasn't even a dot on the map. And he told them, in that little village on the side of the mountain, you're going to find a, 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 the colt, the foal of a donkey, the, a donkey tied up along the road. Untie it and bring it to me. And if anybody asks you 
what you're doing, tell them the Lord needs it and they'll let you take him. So the disciples walk up the, the side of the mountain. They find the donkey just as Jesus said. Just as Jesus said, people ask them, what are you doing? They said, the Lord needs it. And they let them take him. And so they come back down the mountain to Bethany. And there they lay their cloaks, their, their coats on the donkey, kind of like a saddle. Jesus sits down on the donkey. And then together with the, the thousands of other pilgrims walking up that rocky road up the Mount of Olives and down the other side, Jesus and his disciples make their way to Jerusalem. And word soon spreads like wildfire fire up ahead that Jesus of Nazareth, the great prophet, was coming. So the people took off their cloaks and laid them on the road. They cut down palm branches, laid them on the road, kind of like rolling out the red carpet today. And as they went along the road, the people were singing the well-known words of Psalm 118, a psalm they always sang as they were walking on the road to Jerusalem for the Passover. But now those words had new meaning. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna is a Hebrew word which means save now. You know, Palm Sunday was a day in which a lot of things belonged together. A lot of the things were kind of the same, but, but not everything. Yeah, you think about it, the people were excited. There was a buzz in the crowd. They, they were openly asking one another, could this be the promised Messiah? And so they received Jesus with fanfare, with pomp and circumstance, as if he were, were royalty. But then there's Jesus riding into Jerusalem humbly on a donkey. Riding humbly to, to die. As many of you know, I kind of fancy myself a writer. Okay? But I've always admired writers who are good at, at turn of phrase. Do you know what that means, turn of phrase? Turn of phrase is when, when you say something in a, a unique, colorful, concise way. Many of the, the hymn writers from our hymnal were really good at turn of phrase, saying things in a unique way. And we have one of those unique phrases in the hymn we just sang. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. That's a great turn of phrase. In lowly pomp. Jesus came into Jerusalem with pomp and circumstance. As a king, the people received him as royalty. But he rode in humbly on a donkey. He rode on to die. And that actually is what Palm Sunday has to do with Advent. That's what Palm Sunday has to do with Christmas. All of these things belong together. All of these things are kind of the same. Think about it. Think about that, that first Christmas night. The God and King and Lord of all things was born as a human being. The infinite became an infant. Qu Angel choirs announced his birth. And yet he was born the, the lowly son of a poor carpenter in a tiny backwater village called Bethlehem. And then they laid him in a manger, the feeding trough for animals. The only people that went to visit him that first night were a bunch of shepherds. I mean, sure, months later, royal emissaries from the east, the wise men, went to visit him. But again, these things don't seem to belong together. Jesus entered Jerusalem the last week of his life 
in lowly pomp. But it makes sense because he was born in lowly pomp. He, he rode into Jerusalem when he was 33 years old to die. 33 years earlier, he was born in Bethlehem for the same reason. To die. That's what Palm Sunday is all about. And that's what Christmas is all about. All of these things belong together. All of these things are kind of the same. The question is, why? Why did the King of Glory come in lowly pomp? Why did he humble himself to be born in a barn and to ride on a donkey? Why did he come to die? And to answer that question, I want you to to look around again here at church. Because all of these things belong together. All of these things are kind of the same. But one of these things does not belong here. Do you know what it is? It's you. It's me. I mean, haven't you ever felt that way? Like, like you don't belong here? I mean, you're no saint. Can you imagine if the people sitting around you right now knew the things you have done in your life? Can you imagine if they knew what your marriage was really like? They knew what you did when you were looking at your phone. They knew what you did when you were a kid. No, you don't belong here, in God's house, in God's presence. And neither do I. Neither do the people sitting around you today. But we do belong here. We belong here because of that baby born in Bethlehem. We belong here because of that humble son of a carpenter riding on that donkey. We belong here because he rode on to die. The glorious and all-powerful, holy God who fills all things became a lump of cells in Mary's belly. He came to this earth so that he could suffer your punishment take on your disgrace and die your death. That's what Christmas is all about. Jesus came in lowly pomp to die for you so that you could be forgiven completely and forever. God forgives you those things you hope nobody here ever finds out about. You are washed completely clean because of Him. That's the promise of your baptism. And this time of year, Advent, before Christmas, is a time for us to look at ourselves honestly in the mirror and admit, confess that we don't belong here. We don't belong in God's presence. We don't belong in heaven. But God so loved us that He came to win for us a place in His presence in heaven. Christmas, Palm Sunday, Good Friday, Easter, all of those things belong together. All of those things are kind of the same. And yet sometimes we are tempted to treat Christmas as if it was different than those things. That Christmas is about the parties and the the presents. Or Christmas is about a cute children's Christmas program. or, Or a cute baby in a manger surrounded by cute shepherds and cute angels. That Christmas is really the celebration of a baby. 
But that's not what Christmas is about. Christmas isn't about cute. Christmas is about the cross. It's about God Himself coming in lonely pomp to die for you. And because He did, you belong here. You belong in God's presence. You belong in heaven. No matter how bad you've messed up. No matter how far you've fallen. And that's why today, on this first Sunday of Advent, as we prepare ourselves for Christmas, we are studying the story of Palm Sunday. That's why today, together with those, those pilgrims on the road to Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, we are singing Hosanna. Save us now. Because that's what this is about. That's why these things are all together. That's what Christmas is all about. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.